Welcome back. Margie Engel here. We're going to talk about sewing machines because the very first day the moment very quickly arises that the students are ready to get to the sewing machines and they are, that's a long awaited moment. They are eager. The, some of these students and the beginners have never been in front of a sewing machine, have never used a sewing machine. So what we hope to do is build in good habits from the very beginning. That means we will be doing a lot of repetition. But the first thing is that you all need to know about these sewing machines because they're not the ones you sew with at home. And you need to know a little bit more than the students do. So everything I show you may not be everything you show the students, but you will want to know. So we're going to walk through both of the sewing machines that we use at Kids Camp. We use Janome Gems. These are newer machines that, that the uh, company gave us. And we use these older Elnas, which are both a blessing to us. And the neat thing is that all of the feet and the bobbins are interchangeable in these two machines. So that's a big blessing. You don't have to worry about, do I have the correct bobbin for the, the right machine? You do. Now, the wonderful moment of setting up the sewing machine itself. Obviously, the first thing you have to do, since it's electric, is you have to plug it in. So, the plugs are on the sides of the machine, okay? The on and off switch are on the sides of the machine. And the minute I turn this on, two things will happen. This light will light up, this light will light up. And Watch this because this is going to dance and say I am ready to work for you. So I'm simply turning it on from the side and up it comes and says I am ready. Now this will come up automatically in the first stitch. You are ready to sew at this point but you have not checked the length of the stitch. There are two knobs here. This knob would indicate the width of the stitch, and that is not an issue unless you are sewing zigzag. We don't use that in camp at all. We use this straight stitch. Now, if you watch this, I want to set the straight stitch so it's not quite so tiny, so that if we have to unsew, we can do it. It's currently come up, it's now, it comes up at two. Now it's at 2.2, and as I'm raising this, I'm raising the length of the stitch and I would take it to a 2.8 and once you do that it will stay that way until you turn the machine off. So I would just bring it up to 2.8 but remember to do that when you come in the morning. That's one of the things you want to make sure that that you switch that to and you keep it to that. This knob right here is a motor speed slide. If it's pushed way down here with that little one arrow, it sews very slowly, and that is where you start with these children. It's wonderful. It's a perfect speed for them to start learning to sew. I don't mind if they learn what this is, because sooner or later, they're going to push it up. You're going to push it up to this middle notch, which is two diamonds. And eventually, those kids, the eager beavers, are going to push it up all the way, and that's fine. It has a very nice speed. But when you first start off, start slow, and then gradually move it up. This is different on the Elna, and I will show you on the Elna where this, uh, in a minute, where this occurs on the Elna. But this is all you really have to deal with in this area. And then the other thing we have to look at, of course, is this needle section down here and the foot section. I already have an ankle on the machine here, and I already have a needle in. This is the way it comes to you at camp. We have this all set up for you to, to uh, work with. But the one thing you need to check every morning is, is that needle tight enough? You don't have to make it so tight but there, that, you know, that it's hard to get out. But there, is, there are these screws here and there's a needle screw right here and you'll want to make sure that that needle screw is tight. Sometimes through vibration they may loosen and you'll suddenly have a needle fall in the process of sewing. That will never happen if you check that in the beginning. Now, when you come to camp, the bobbin will be in the machine, but during the course of the day, you will run out of bobbin thread and you will want to send your camper to the supply table with your empty bobbin and we will give her a full one. You do not have to stop and run a bobbin. We keep those run for you. But you do need to learn how to put this bobbin in. Now here are the bobbins. They are plastic. We don't use metal, as I said before. And the one thing that you have to learn to do that I think is the easiest way to learn to do is when you're ready to put the bobbin in, hold it between your fingers like this with the thread coming over. 
hanging down like this. If you do that, that bobbin is going to go in the correct way. If you don't and the bobbin goes in the wrong way, it may not sew as well as it sews the other way. It'll sew both ways, but this is the prime sew. So you simply hold it in your fingers like this, then you put it over here and you just drop it in its little, little space. And then you take that thread and there is a little notch right here and I just put it under that notch and you are ready to go. Now that we have seated the bobbin thread in the bobbin holder, we're ready to actually thread the machine and bring the bobbin thread up. So the first thing we do, obviously, is put the thread on the, on the spool holder and then thread the machine. Most machines thread the same in very similar fashions. The thread comes over this way, goes around a loop, and there are arrows here indicating this. And you follow the thread comes down here. Here's a little arrow that says, okay, now we bring the thread back up. Here's an arrow that says we loop it around this pin holder right here in the hole. Take it back down that same hole down here. And we have this wonderful, wonderful needle threader here that comes down and you thread your needle using this needle threader. So you will like that addiction. Once you have threaded your needle, your thread is here. Now you are ready to pull up your bobbin thread. So all we do is put our hand on the pedal over here and turn it ever slightly to holding this thread out so that we can lower our needle and bring up the bobbin thread and let the machine start to do its work. So the machine is working. I am turning this and it brings up this thread and we grab the bobbin thread and we're ready then to put our spool case cover back on the machine and that just there's two prongs here and you see it slides in here and you just snap it down. To open that, you don't try to pry it open. There's a black button right here. You just push the black button and it springs up and you're good to go. Or you just simply put that back down. But once you've done this, you are ready to sew. The other thing I want to repeat and emphasize is the tendency that the students have and that deals with this knob. When we are turning this knob to bring up our thread, we are turning it toward ourselves or counterclockwise. The students have a tendency to want to turn it in the other direction. It's just a normal thing I see happening with them. If you see your student doing that, you'll have to stop them. And the only gimmick we've ever come up with to remind them is to tell them, turn it as though you were drinking a glass of water. That gets the motion toward themselves. Otherwise, they'll turn it away from themselves, they'll get this all gobbledygooked up, and they'll think, oh dear, I have done something dreadfully wrong, and of course assure them everything's all right, we can fix anything. But try to get them in that habit, because again, we just have to create good habits here. It would be a good idea for us to take a look at how the walking foot actually fits on these machines. You won't use the walking foot until the quilts are sandwiched and then you will be sewing on two layers of fabric and matting and that is why we need a walking foot to give us the even feed. This walking foot is the, we, again the same walking foot as we use on the Janome. You will notice there's a screw right here. You have to, to put this on, you have to take your trusty screwdriver and loosen that screw which would have been holding the other the ankle and the other foot. You remove that screw and then loop around so that loop this white plastic so that it fits on on the uh, stem of the machine. The, the trick though is that there is a gadget right here, a hook, if you can see this, and it fits over the needle holder. If that is not over or at least the needle holder isn't through that, your walking foot is not going to do you any good at all. That's the key factor that you have to look for right there. If you have that in place and you have this screw tight, make sure it's tight. You don't have to tighten it so tight we can't undo it, but you do have a screwdriver. Then you're ready to, to work with that and it will give you an even feed. And you must remember, and I'll remind you again and again and again, or you will be reminding the students, that we have to keep the weight of the quilt up on the table for this to operate at its most efficient way. 
You will notice the differences from the Janome to the Elna are very slight, but you will be happy that you know them. Let me turn this and show you where the knobs are. I mentioned earlier that the speed, the motor speed on the Janome Gem was on the front of the machine. On the Elna, it is here on the right side, and it is a two speed. So there are two markings shown here. The bottom one is a turtle, and the top one has a picture of a rabbit. You will start out the children with the turtle, obviously, and then at some point when you think it's time to show them this, you will pop this up to the rabbit and the child will be sewing the rabbit. This will happen the first day. After that, the child will know I'm sewing on rabbit speed unless someone really, really is cautious and wants to stay on the turtle speed. We do not care at all. This is the selector knob for the stitch. Now the machine will come up in the straight stitch, but in case you have to move something, you will know that this is the knob that you change. Now let me show you the front of the stitch, the front of the machine, and you will notice right away if I turn this off and then bring it up. Don't know that you can see the lights really well, but what happens is this comes up. There's a little red light indicator right here under stitch number 12, which indicates a zigzag. And you, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that's the stitch it will come up in, and that is the straight stitch as well. Believe it or not, we don't have a straight stitch indicator on here, simply because the zigzag is just a minor change in a straight stitch. So what you want to do is be on stitch 12, the zigzag, and then you will move over here and make very sure that the zig, or the zag, is pushed all the way over on zero. It's this knob right here, and you can just push it over, and there's an indicator that shows that's for the zigzag. All we are concerned about is the length of the stitch. And the way that we achieve the proper length of the stitch is the second slider under here. And you may not see it. There's a little knob, a little button you can feel. Again, this slides. And you will simply slide this over for that button to be just in front of the three, which will give you about a 2.8 length stitch. And that is exactly what you want to have happen. Now, the top of the machine is somewhat different. Let's take a look at the top of the Elna machine since it's slightly different from the Janome that you just saw. The needle threader, the spool threader, is right in here and it does tip up slightly. The other spool threader, if you prefer to use it, can simply be stuck in here and the thread can go on it vertically. Most of the time, I find that the students like to put the thread onto that. So we take the thread so that, again, the thread, the the uh, thread is coming off the spool, off the top of the spool, and we simply slide the spool onto the spool holder, and again, we need a cap. We don't need it to be placed tightly. We simply need it there so the spool doesn't dance off. Once we have done that, we are ready then to thread the machine, and all we do is come over here around this black knob, and there is an arrow indicating it, and we start our downward motion and our upward motion, and the arrows indicate all of this. It threads just exactly as do all the other machines that you have seen. So it's a very simple process.